Hey everyone, it's Gildamem here, and this is the ultimate tips and tricks guide that every player should know. There are a lot to go through, so let's just get started. Starter Zone You can go to any other starter zone after you complete the initial tutorial mission. And you can go ahead and play with any of the races, if for example your friend chose to play Norn, which I have no idea why, but hey, some people like that. You can go ahead and play with them, same with Char, same with Human, same with uh, Silvari and Asura. You can access Lion's Arch by going to the PvP lobby or World vs World. There is also a portal in every main city for each race. Lion's Arch is the main hub city for all races, so you can access everything there. It is, this includes portals to fractals and instance dungeon content, raids and lots of vendors and other crafting stations. Make sure you unlock your waypoint so you can come back to it whenever you need to. You can instantly open your chest rewards on the corner of your screen by right clicking on them. This works for 90% of the chests in the game. Exception is some map reward chests or raid dungeon chests at the end of a meta that will still give you the pop up. You can't do this with level up rewards either. Enemies that haven't died in a while will give bonus XP, especially the non violent ones. So if you're running around in the map, don't skip past them. Their sacrifice will be worth it. You can go to your guild hall by clicking G to spawn the guild panel and clicking on the guild hall option from there. If your guild has the levels unlocked for the tavern, you can buy some enhancements such as XP or magic find to increase your reward or XP gain, along with other options. Modifiers appear above the skill bar on the right side and you then can leave the guild hall and will transport you back to the previous location. A quick note, heart vendors also offer modifiers such as food that can also give you different types of buffs and rewards or other enhancements. If you are starting out, I would recommend every time you finish a heart, check if there is anything that you can purchase with karma. Gray items can be sold by clicking the sell junk button when selling to vendors. You can organize items in the Mystic Forge instead of scrolling every time to find them. When you are underwater, the rebreather replaces your helmet. This means if you are using 6 runes on your gear and you don't have the same rune on the rebreather, you lose the 6th rune. So just make sure you put one on that one as well. You can repair your armor for free at any repair station. Make sure your gathering materials are the right ones or you will ruin the harvest and have to sell the items as junk. If you are low on gold, the best ones to pick up are the Orc Alchem tools since they can harvest everything below their tier. Of course you do have to keep replacing them but you will get by just as fine with these until you have enough to buy the unlimited gathering tools. You can change utility skills by right clicking and selecting rather than clicking on the very small arrow that is annoying when you miss and click on the skill by mistake. This works for mounts and novelties too. This also works when swapping your equipment and build templates by right clicking the weapon swap button over here. You can set a skill to auto attack by pressing control right click. You can resize your minimap and move it to the top of your screen and this also works for your chat box. You can also play around with the size of the minimap if you like to have it pretty big. And I believe you can do the same with your chat. Change your settings in game and check the boxes on the settings you want. I highly recommend you maybe spend a few minutes looking at the settings and binding things to the way that you want and comfortable with playing. Example, removing the double tap to evade. This can be annoying when you're accidentally pressing your W key or whatever it is to move forward twice and it can trigger the dodge. It can be annoying if it is switched on, so just switch that off. You can click the dodge bar here to dodge or your top part of the circle health. Don't ever use this method, just bind the key to dodge, it's much easier, trust me. You can dodge jump by pressing space and your dodge key at the same time. This is very useful in some jumping puzzles. It also allows you to jump a bit further than the regular dodge. While sitting down, you can also hit the dodge button. That's actually useless, but hey, the more you freaking know. Jumping puzzle shenanigans. Some jumping puzzles in the game might have dark areas, which can be difficult to see in. If you wield a weapon such as a torch, it can as a torch should, light up the way a bit for you. Also, it's a useful trick to use your ground target skills 
try and show where you can jump next this is very useful in rooms that are dark and you have no idea where the platforms are you can just hover around with the ground target skills and see where the next area is there is an about face button that you can bind this will spin you around 180 degrees it's good to swap directions quickly and it's also extremely helpful when using a skill that is launching you backwards but you're using it to launch you forward for example and it's also very useful for switching directions quickly in pvp you can also use the about face while holding down control left click to run backwards while you're looking in your current direction when using your map you can hover your mouse on the icons to reveal where the missing points are this only works for areas you have revealed on the map also some maps have a different elevation you can change this by clicking on the icon on this part of the map settings you can alt click on your mini map or full map to set markers shift and dragging the right click to draw while on this topic there is a target button that you can do Control t can target something for you if you need to bring attention to something or if it's an enemy that you want your teammates to focus you can also choose to take a target keybind to target the marked person when targeting it will also show on the minimap as shown here in the same clip pressing the backslash on your keyboard will darken the chat box there are some quick chat commands that you can do to quickly solve the chat for example slash s or say slash w for whispering someone slash p for party slash g for guild and so on if you click on someone's name in chat you can also whisper them directly that way you can also type slash w and type your name this actually allows you to whisper yourself if you need to check on something like pasting a waypoint code for reference or pinging something for your own reference you can type slash wiki space et to show the events that will happen in the open world you can also use slash wiki and the quest or any other specific item that you're looking for to bring you to that page. Wiki itself, I'd highly recommend that you go to the Guild Wars 2 wiki if you want to read up on anything that you are working on in the game. It is a great resource of information. You can also type slash age to show how long you've been playing the game and the hours on the current character. Slash deaths will also show you the total amount of deaths you've had in the game. As I am a world-renowned Baron, of course, I don't have that many deaths. You can complete any three daily achievements to get the daily reward, which is two gold and a bag of spirit shards, and you earn 10 achievement points. You can watchlist the achievements you are working towards, and they will appear on the top right corner of your screen. You can also click and drag the APs around to change the order if you want to. If you have a character that is used for all chest parking and you don't want to move them but you have items you need to place in your bank and you want to use them, you can go to the PvP lobby and deposit them at the bank over there. And then just click leave lobby and it will take you back to your previous location. This is very helpful if you don't have a shared inventory slot or a bank access contract on you. Also, since this is the second time I've mentioned the PvP lobby, it's a good substitute if you do not own a VIP pass. It gives you access to the bank, trading post, and the other similar vendors, although it is missing the crafting stations. The bonus though is that you can go over here and kill people and unleash any of that anger. Now the next tip, the most important one I would say, is that you can get Amazon Prime rewards for Guild Wars 2 when you link your Amazon and Twitch account. Keep a lookout for 50% discount on expansions and other in-game goodies you can get whenever this page displays an active reward. Also, with Twitch Prime, you can subscribe to your favorite streamer. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. For free, and you just have to renew the sub every month to continue this. And it also helps support the channel. And most of it is put back into giveaways anyway for the community. Hey, so don't let that Prime sub collect some dust. Use it and help your favorite streamer today. It's twitch.tv slash guildamin. When completing hearts, which is Guild Wars 2's version of NPC quests, if you must do a task that requires a long channel or an animation that's taking too long, you can skip the animation by swapping your weapons after you hit F. This works for most hearts and with these kind of tasks which have a long animation. 
every time you complete the task the heart icon on the top right will spark a bit if you did it right it will also add progress to your heart i didn't have any footage to show this but it did happen to me while i was exploring a heart and i thought it was a cool trick adventures if you want to reset an adventure without having to go all the way back you can click on it in the top right side of your screen and hit x to reset it very useful when you're trying to get that gold box reward on the 50th or 60th attempt but who's counting did you know that soul beasts in downstate can actually swap pets it feels good to be ranger it's pretty useful if you want to maybe fear or chill enemies when you're swapping to a different pet and then use that as an opportunity to revive yourself when unlocking your new skills rather than unlock them one at a time you can click on the last one or up to the skill that you have enough hero points to unlock saving you from clicking too much if you click on your level experience bar at the bottom of a character that isn't level 80 it will show you the next level rewards if you do so on a level 80 character it will bring up your mastery panel and show you your progress on unlocked or locked masteries note that masteries are only available if you have heart of thorns and pf expansions of course there are core tier masteries which i believe are okay for free to play accounts combo, combo. you can combo certain skills to create bonus effects the example if i hit this skill and that skill you will see that there are some burnings that are showing up here and that's basically like enabling a combo there's also break bars as well some bosses in the game have them and there are some skills that break the bars known as cc skills short for crowd control when you manage to break the break bar which is the blue bar under their health you manage to interrupt them or stun them briefly i recommend you look at which skills in your class are considered break bars or cc skills if you need to check on your currencies and where they are all displayed you can do so by opening the inventory and clicking on the coin icon over here this shows you all the currencies in the game and how much you have in each currency Speaking of inventory, every player's true endgame challenge. If you are salvaging items with a salvage kit, you can click on each item or an item in a stack. But if you want to save your fingers, you can right click the salvage kit and choose salvage stack. This will allow you to salvage any stack of items you choose to do so in the inventory to save time. For example, if you want to salvage a whole stack of ectos, maybe if you want some of that luck, which you actually need to increase the magic find, you can also choose to salvage items of a certain rarity and if you have better kits you can do the same with the higher tier of items some mobs will drop unidentified gear and there are three rarities of these starting with blue green and yellow if you open them up you are guaranteed an item of that quality with a chance at a higher one if you want to get rid of them, best way is to list them on the trading post or salvage the contents you get out of them. Note that you should always open them up if you plan to salvage. Did you accidentally open and realize that you don't have space to keep all those items? You can close the inventory and this will stop the bag opening process. Did you want to salvage items except for a specific one? You can put it in the shared account slots or you can just throw it in the bank and it gets ignored for the command for example if i click salvage you could see that this piece specifically is going to be included let's say i did not want for example that bag to be included you could place it in the shared inventory slot and now the command actually ignores it you can deposit the materials directly into your bank by clicking on the deposit materials button on the top right corner of your screen you can also choose to show your bags on your inventory or just have it in one big space like this. If you hit compact, it will shift all the items together and remove any spaces between them. You can also right click bags in your inventory and hit open all to save time. Holding alt and dragging an item into another slot will allow you to split it or you can type the exact amount you want to split it by. You can also type in the search bar of your inventory if you want to look for something specific can do so by for example typing a rarity of an item or if you wanted to search up only the consumables such as opening a bag or other stuff it will only display those items this makes it easier for you to find where the loot is and opening them placing anything in your bank can be accessed by any other character on your account and the material storage tab is where all those materials go when you click deposit materials 
The wardrobe tab will show you a list of armors, weapons, and other skins in the game that you've unlocked on the account, and the ones you don't have so you can preview and maybe find a new look you want to go for. Double clicking an item will instantly remove it from the bank to your character. On the regular tab you can also search an item name and doing so also allows you to just keep clicking the item into the bank rather than moving the mouse to click to each slot. When leveling up, don't worry about gearing until level 80. You can actually get by in the game with most of the rewards you get from completing the story or from loot dropped from mobs. Once you hit level 80, you can buy some decent gear by going to the trading post. There is a settings option by clicking on the cog and filtering to the items you want. You can also play with the tabs to get an idea of how this works. The gear rarity is as follows. White. Blue, which is common, green, which is masterwork, rare, which is yellow, orange, which is exotic, pink, which is ascended, and purple, which is legendary. If you get an ascended item with the wrong stats, don't worry, you can actually change the stats with the Mystic Forge recipe. Just make sure that if you have the upgrades or infusions on the ascended item already, to extract them out or you'll lose those upgrades once you roll the item into the forge. Gear on your build templates does not take additional space from your inventory even if they aren't being used. Once you hit level 80, you can buy some exotic gear, but don't spend too much because you can get by with level 78 stats and you'll most likely go for ascended later and this saves you a lot of gold for gear so you'll probably throw away once you get your ascended. If you need a guide on where to get ascended gear, I actually have one, it's linked below in the description. Also on the training post, if you type I am Yvonne Nashblade, it will remove the icons and just list the names of the items with a very short picture. This might make your TP slower since it will show way too many items, and you can also retype the same phrase to swap it back. Always list your items on the training post, the small difference in profit will add up. Keep in mind that if you list your items, there's a 5% listing fee and a 10% tax fee when the item sells. This 15% actually still applies if you sell to the buy order, so you have no reason to actually sell to buy order. Always list the item. You can also see the estimated profit here, which will give you the final amount you make based on what price you choose to sell. This is actually a feature that surprisingly is not known to a lot of people. But anyway, you can click on the sell items tab to go through the items you want to sell and then clicking on the price can arrange your items starting with the most expensive to the lowest. You can buy and sell things on the trading post from anywhere in the game. You do not need to be next to a vendor to do so. Only when you need to pick up the gold or items that you purchase, such as here, you have to go to a vendor to collect those items. Or if you have a permanent trading post, then you can always spawn one. If you see an exclamation point on your trading post icon, this is when you have gold or items to collect. If you see a gift box icon under your trading post, this means there is a free item on the gem store. You can go ahead and claim it by finding it in the promotions. Also, keep a lookout on promotions on other items in the gem store from time to time. Sometimes there are sales in the game. It's useful to buy stuff when they are cheap. Also, while gems are the cash currency you can buy in the game, you can actually convert in-game gold to gems, which makes this a great way to still get items without having to pull that credit card out. You can change your status to online, away, or invisible when you are trying to avoid people, but it could still expose you. If you are friends with someone and you are hiding offline, it will still show you the map that they're currently in. So your friends in the game that still exposes you but for example to followers who are players that have added you but you haven't added they still won't be able to see this difference also on the friends list you can find squads and parties for content that you're looking for by using the lfg this is found in your friends list icon and you can also type slash lfg in your chat box to enable the lfg icon on your character Look up on some great builds for your class, I highly recommend some of these websites and a few others for some different resources. Meta Battle is good for general open world content and also has some specific game modes such as WW and PvP. Discretize is a great website for fractals, a type of instance dungeon content. Snow Crows is great for raids and Gods of PvP is more specific on PvP. Each website explains builds very well and also has examples of how the rotations work and other information. 
Another website, if you're interested in checking up on items and price history, is GW2BLTC.com. can show you graphs of the price history and can be very useful if you're a trader. GW2 Efficiency is a website you should have. It can track everything on your account, from achievements to unlocked items, recipes, all the way to items you have on every single character. For example, if you are trying to craft a specific item, the website can also show you how much you have to craft it and what is the missing for you to farm or buy. To gain the full potential of this website, you have to get an API key and enter it on the website. It's completely safe to do so as long as you don't share any of your information with anyone, you should be okay. Well, if you made it to the end of this video, hey, congrats! I hope you learned some new tricks. The last advice is really just joining a community of players. It's the best way to play this game, and if you need help finding some of the public communities, join this Discord. I'll include a link of it in the description below. It is pretty much the Guild Wars 2 hub Discord, and it stores every major community in the game, from raids to PvP to trades to even specific communities that run their own events and such. I included the link in the description. Again, feel free to check it out and join the communities you like from there. Two communities that I am very active in are the Overflow Trade Discord, where you can learn how to earn gold in the game, from farming to trading, along with finding some other partnered guilds, communities, and streamers, and you might want to join them from there. And another community that I'm also involved in is Hardstuck, which is dedicated to providing content for all kinds of communities in the game, such as running our own events. You can also check out other streamers in our community. And finally, we're towards the end of the video. I hope this video helped you out a lot. If you are a veteran player as well, maybe you learned something new as well. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. If you have any other tricks and tips, feel free to comment them below for the ultimate guide and for others to see. If you have any other questions, you can also put them down below and maybe someone else can help answer. Or you can come find me on twitch.tv forward slash guildmm on the following days. So stop by, ask me any questions, subscribe, win some giveaways. I am the best gold per hour streamer. That's all for the video though. So I will see you when I see you. Take care.